All right, so welcome to episode number two of Rolling with the Rock. I'm here again, Dr. James Spinks, hosting our session along with uh, One Nation and AKA the Kinky, well, Build and Destroy, AKA the Kinky Shop. And so make sure y'all take a visit to our website at daarac.ngo. What's going on, fellas? What you got going? Hey, one, you can start out, man. You you living a good life, man. I'm out here. Hey, we all living a good life. No doubt. You talking about. No doubt. Somebody got a new microphone, so when it comes hey. to good life, hey. that have to be the kinky shout. That joint is symbolic. That this is this is I call Spinks like yo. I said like Biggie called Puff. Whatever we're doing, man, I'm all in. You know, I <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to talk about my favorite film of the genre, which is Sweet Sweetback. <laughs> Sweet Sweetback's badass song. Yeah, yeah. My mother told me that she watched it when she tried to watch it uh, when she was pregnant with me. Mm. The first 10 minutes, she got up and walked out of the motherfucker when she saw the little boy laying down with the woman it was it was a whole house that he was in right he was cleaning herself and she said hey come on over here mm-hmm. took his clothes off got him to mount up and mount in mm. right <laughs> and she said hey you ain't getting your picture taken because <laughs> oh. <laughs> he, he right there right so and then you hear wade in the water Oh, right, right. The gospel spiritual that's going on. Mm-hmm. The minister of defense, Huey P. Newton, which used the movie as required uh, viewing hmm. for anybody that was going to enter the party. I wrote a paper in school about it. And the, and the teacher looked at me like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> he... It, he didn't have anything to really critique because he didn't understand what the hell was going on anyway right. about right. the film or, or anything to be able to sit and try to judge film theory. That's what it was. Mm. And he just looked like, uh, I don't even know how to grade this shit. Nah, because <laughs> you, you don't know how to watch it. <laughs> right. You know, that's that's half the problem with the movie in the first place is, is, some, is people being able to get through the first 10 minutes of the film. Because you don't know where this is going. You know, Mario Van Peebles went for, I mean, uh, Melvin went for immediate shock value. Most certainly that that waiting in the water, man, that as we were sitting here, I was thinking about rebirth, you know, um, like really you're baptized. So that was almost like a baptismal to him in the beginning, like straight off Jump Street, you know, um, um, in, in, into this real world and that's why we were talking about that last episode about how this you know even at the ending he was saying you know be careful it's a bad nigga you know what i mean like a badass that was some of the first time we start getting our characters can be grimy (laughs) you know and and but that's connected to revolution as well you know um because you got to be mad you got to be angry you got to be grimy in a certain way to be a revolutionary You, you know we're not you're not going to be shaking hands during the revolution, not most of the time anyway. So, Right. And then even uh, even so, man, it was um, it was somewhat of a sexploitation flick as well, because they had a lot of erotic scenes that uh, happened throughout the film, you know, that comes seemingly out of nowhere a lot of times. Uh, but <laughs> don't. Don't let this episode be all about it. You start opening up a can, I'm going to start going hard on all those scenes and what it represented. When it comes to sexuality, masculinity, we got Kinky Shaman over here that can go on for five, six days on that. When when when, when, when he had the the sex battle. The bike. The bike. The bike. Oh. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You see what I mean? (laughs) <laughs> like it's it's out of control. It's, like it, it it's for real, 
um, an out of control mm-hmm. film in that, you know, some will get and understand the artistry, the artistic value behind it, man. But this, this brings up a very interesting point about directors, some directors that want to convey a message, but they, they're so artistic that their messages get lost in trying to figure out what message is trying to be conveyed. Oh yeah, they end up Prince and Purple Rain. You only making music for yourself, you know that one. <laughs> right, right. Nobody understands your music but you, Prince. <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, so. And then, and you know, some people may see Sweet back and be like, "Man, I can't watch this again." You know, and so because they're unable to go back and watch it, they're not un- unable to to get the message. But some people yeah. don't care about the message if the delivery ain't, you know, to their moral standards. And Melvin, you know, you know, an underage boy having sex with a with a with a grown woman that don't fare too well in twenty twenty one. Well, not every not every issue of the black community can be you know can be fixed by a, a you know a man in a dress in in church at the end of the day at the end of the day you know that's just not what it's going to be so I, I like having complicated movies i do think if you're trying to reach a broad market that you do have to pull back some of the um artistry of it however i hate the simple movies that many of us are trying to put out as well um you know, some good time, feel good, everything is okay, and, you know, the Lord is going to make everything go well and shit. And that's but, it. you know, the movies that really that really did that was uh, hood films because there was nothing, very few of the hood films ended happily. You know, most of them ended with some type of despair because it was really bringing in perspective to what was going on in the inner cities uh during the mid 80s and 90s and you know you two cats being from la and new york probably seen with your own eyes your neighborhood changed within a matter of five or six oh, years in nwa and, and krs1 set it off you know <clears throat> right there both of them put out albums like yo this is this is what's going on in the hood and 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 the music and the movies i think reflected the time and public enemy you know they I, I always talk about uh, they made um, Night of the Living Baseheads, and I said that's my neighborhood. They're talking about my neighborhood, <laughs> you know. I, I live in that neighborhood, and and see friends turn into crackheads, and yeah, and and mm-hmm. you know, people selling irons and shit, <laughs> just like you know, being like, how much can I get? How many vials can I get for an iron? Like, fuck, really? <laughs> you know, they, they they willing to sell whatever they could, you know. Um, I got a I got a question. Uh what about where would we classify Sweet Sweetback? Is it is it a hood film? Could it be a could it be a, could it be a slave film? Could it be, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh no, because if if you're looking at it and really checking all all the narratives that's that's rife throughout from top to bottom, where would we really classify that? Because when it comes to all the other films that were deemed black black exploitation uh, between 1970 to the end of the era, the decade, I had never seen anything else like that after that. Right. It's, it's... So, so when it when it comes to the first time saying fuck the police, Melvin Van Peebles was the first yeah. on record to take his handcuffs and kill a police officer on film. I... I... That's and everybody question. jumped up and went crazy. Yeah. So how, how would we really question. classify what that film was? Because it was definitely separated from the era entirely. That's why it creates such a discussion. I think that that had been um, sort of what what Doctor Spinks was is saying. Man, it w- I think he tried to do it all. I think he tried to right. make it a hood flick, um, mm-hmm. uh, connected to ancient black. You know. You know. He 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 did some some self-healing you know what i mean when he had that scar and he was shot man he pissed in the dirt and made himself back whole man and towards the end of that, <laughs> that because he's running into nature man and it, it's certainly um places where um i totally agree with you on that the idea behind these hood films man and uh sweet back could definitely be considered one of the first original hood films that we had during the era 
um, which brings up a uh, an interesting um, point of view <clears throat> about how black exploitation flicks may be the original hood films, uh, because most of the most of the urban uh, flicks like uh, Sweet Bag uh, or the Black Caesars and Hell Up in Harlem and and even arguably and I know this may hurt some people's feelings, man, to even consider this a hood film. But even arguably, Cooley High, um, because of the nature of Cooley High. I mean, it brought in inner city problems. It brought in kids that was going through life a particular type of way. And it's not like it ended in a positive note, man. That's one of the most tragic films, good films that we have in our genre. You know, so I know some may not want to consider it a hood film. But it was it was taking place in the inner city, and it talked about problems that existed amongst people. And as, as as Spinks was backing up, man, you know, certainly a hood film. I mean, certainly a hood film, um, because this is where the environment starts connecting to the personality of the people. Like we actually started to bring that out through the film, and, and I think in other places as well. It's like part of the reason of who I am is where I'm from. Um, and I, I certainly think that that's true, but as he ran, <laughs> as he ran for the police, I don't know. Every time I think of him running, I think about niggas have feet and knees and shit. So, <laughs> I find that amusing for some reason. But anyway, um, so as he's running, he 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 goes through different levels, and I don't even know if it's like Dante's hell, man. But he's going through different circles of 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 of, of what this experience was man he ran for a long time and but it's a hood film it's certainly a hood film you know you see the the corner store uh, you know storefront preacher you know that was in the hood you, you know you see pool halls you see gambling spots a question that i have uh for you Juan, man is that these movies left an impression on a generation but they didn't you know not without some type of controversy in your opinion of hood films, did these movies have a negative or positive influence on the black on, on on the black community, especially the youth? And do they do they age well over time? Is this something that we can still, you know, I can show my daughter, or you can show your youngins today and get them to understand the context of these films? What other film could I think of that? Uh, juice. Juice. Juice wow. and 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 you know Juice. to even point South Central, Bobby Johnson, South Central. Yeah. Right, um, right. Um, and some even can see some uh may see that South Central do have some redeeming qualities because of the father figure trying to become a father after he had, you know, did his yeah. dirt and got put in the jail for a time and <laughs> and you know. He's a man, Buddha. <laughs> He's a man, Buddha. You know, but 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 still, you know, it t it took him having to deal with a particular experience for him to understand uh, his responsibility as a father to his kid that was now taken upon the very same lifestyle that he had before he went to jail. You know, and so they some people may see a redeeming quality of the relationship that a black father has with his son given the circumstances that they're put in and it didn't necessarily end as tragic as some of these other hood flicks um like juice you know you got the juice now but that was after tupac fell off from the roof yeah i i, it, I enjoy them but definitely their folk once it becomes romanticized, like you said, there are people who aspire to live that life even though they don't have to. Like there's there's a whole group of people that, you know, if you if you didn't live a certain life, you're gonna either not eat or get beat down every day or those sorts of things. And there's this whole other group of people who watch these movies and then wanted to emulate the life even though they didn't have to. Right, because people are yeah, people are attracted to it. You know, people was attracted to it a certain way. It was rom it was romanticized, and so some of these young dudes on here may see you know how these cats move and how they are able to get women a certain way based on their behaviors. 
and find a, hey, I want to emulate this a little bit because it gets me something. It takes me to a level that I want to be at. I remember I, saw, <laughs> I had a friend, <laughs> it's, and it's not really funny, but for some reason I laugh at it. He didn't want to fight, and he could fight, man, but he just didn't want to. And this is before, you know, everything was recorded and all that sort of stuff. So the whole school is out there, you know, it's before, you know, before we have internet bullies and all that sort of stuff. There's some real bullying shit going on now as we're walking home. The whole school's following. He's talking about he don't want to fight. So the other kid came up, man, and like kind of punched him from behind. Like his arm wrapped around him and hit him in his eye. And my man grabbed his eye and hit the curb and uh fell on the curb and the whole school was looking at him rolling around holding his eye and that was my boy and i looked at him like that ain't gonna be me <laughs> I swear to God, ain't gonna be me and maybe six months later man i was selling i was selling crack and i was just like i'm not gonna try to excel in school like after that you know like like one pointed out i was you know and as Spinks pointed out, I said, oh, man, you know, smart dudes don't get the young ladies. You know what I mean? Um, going to school ain't getting nobody. Um, so what creates that type of mentality, though? Right. Like, where, do, where does not, you know, not getting, um, you know, wanting to have a certain type of education or speak a certain way, where, where does that mentality come from? Well, I think it's... I think there was some truth to it, but as you know, as one pointed out, once we start making these movies on a large scale, it becomes even a, a harder phenomena to to fight off. Because at one time, certainly being an intellectual or doing well in school was a thing um, that your parents and elders pushed you to be. Um, but then as that went along, I guess, you know, we got upset and it became emulating white folk as opposed to something that you did for yourself. Um, I, I don't know if, you know, just being a badass became much more attractive. And I think there's a couple of things that go on, you know, um, sort of like you said, in the black exploitation beginnings of that being a badass became more attractive and then we just brought it to another place and then romanticized it and certainly then it re as I pointed out it you know a form of genocide because I know a lot of people who didn't have to do it you know I didn't have to do it I wasn't you know I wasn't starving but I wasn't gonna get, I wasn't gonna get punched in the eye out in front of everybody <laughs> Right, right. I want to. Um, I actually want to read off a few comments uh, from my Facebook page because I did post uh, very similar questions to the audience, and uh, there was some pretty good responses. And so, I'm gonna read off a few of them, man. Uh, we can kind of build off of some of the things that he said. Uh, one lady named uh, Kiara Jones said, uh, "I think I think of hood movies as a realistic stories that are being told." Some people can relate and some can't. While entertaining, there is trauma and lessons in every one of them. People probably never thought of any of these movies be considered classics one day, yet we are here. Um, another guy named Donald, Donald Lindsay, said, Some of these films are good, and sadly, it's also a way for races other than black people to view us through a keyhole in the comfort and safety of their homes. And some of them will stereotype us through the negative portrayal in some of these films. But other than that, Furious Styles was a damn good father, like James Evans. I've been told that South Central and Fresh were some of the best hood films out of all. I've heard that Maddie Rich cast did not get paid for Straight Outta Brooklyn. And before the 90s hood films, there was Young Blood, The Education of Sonny Carlson, Black Girl, and Comrade Earl and Me. Um... Yeah, that was a solid comment. Okay. Yeah, that was a solid comment from him. And lastly, uh, Terrence said, I recognize that the art is reflection of life, so the emergence of these films is understandable. That being said, art often glamorizes the aspect of life. It reflects in causing weaker-minded, impressionable people to embrace it, mostly for all the wrong reasons. Expression is protected by our freedoms in this country, 
As strongly as we embrace these freedoms, we should also embrace accountability and responsibility. Having freedom doesn't absolve your moral onus. So, so that whole that whole week of mind shit, you know, I, I don't I don't know about that, but I mean, I, I certainly know that there are folk who follow and all that sort of stuff, but you know, if it becomes a trend, I like that 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 quote about it being a keyhole. What what I mean, like if you look at black people through a keyhole, you miss everything to the left and right of what's right in front of you. Right. So right. I really appreciated that comment because this there's so much within black culture or African culture, depending on how you want to categorize or call it, that is just there. You know, so much that's there. And to to have a string of movies represent black people like having hood films represent black people is just a small piece of what it was and i think that that was the arguments with hip-hop for a while it's like ah, oh, hip-hop's not just about the east coast hip-hop's not just about the west coast and then we had the southern movement that said there's this other thing going on and then you know so it, it, uh, we get so caught up in what it means to be a black person and saying this is the only way that you can go about it man you know, I had, a, I think I shared with Spink one, but I didn't share it with you, man. I had, there was a young lady, shoot, that I knew from elementary school. And maybe six months ago, we were on a conversation and she, and you know, she was like, oh, did you, did you know, did, isn't it strange how I realized that, you know, you would, you like uh, men. And I was like, like men, what are you talking about? She was like, you, you don't you're not gay i'm like no you're not bisexual no why would you say that and she said to me because i like clothes because i'm willing to talk about sexuality because i used to like dance to dance and because i was so intelligent and polite like i was like that that <laughs> that should run down and after she said it she was like yeah that's that Saying it out loud doesn't make any sense, but that's what the expectation is. You know, like hood films in some ways makes the expectation of this limited piece of what it means to be black and, and, and manly and, and, and you know, what sort of language we're supposed to use and not use. Right. You know, right. Even how people resolve their problems. Yeah. You know, even how some people resolve their problems. And so, yeah, I thought those were um, some pretty good, uh, some comments from that uh, post, which, you know, generated, you know, over 400 comments, you know. So those were just three out of, you know, many things that were said about them. But, it you know, it definitely brings in perspective of how these films do have uh, such a influence on how people see us. And we can't say that we shouldn't tell these stories because people's going to take it one way. You know, that that isn't the point here, um, but it's definitely one of those things that uh, we should have shown because there are some truths to this stuff. Uh, there is there is a group of people, a highly influential group of people that really love these motherfucking hood films. <laughs> you know, you know who that group is? What group is that there? They're called the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Because the greatest so-called hood films uh, that have been nominated have all won Oscars. Training Day, right? Film, mm. Denzel Washington, calling Ethan Hawke a nigger, all, all movie. Mm -hmm. My <laughs> nigga, my <laughs> nigga. Right. He got awarded for that over Steve Biko, over Reuben Hurricane Carter, over Malcolm X. Right. Right. You know, Right. He was he he played the hilt, played that shit to the hilt as right. far as that academy's concerned. Terrence Howard. Right. Hustle, Hustle and, and flow. flow. Yup. He showed it. Uh Monique. Man, Monique. Monique. Man, Monique. Man. Yes, man. Now he didn't get the he didn't get the best actor, but but three six mafia got the song of the year, which was right. his heart out here for a pimp. Right. <laughs> oh, that's the song of the year. So right. you take that, you also take Monique. 
Oh the mama shit! Of, the mama of precious. Precious, yeah. You you got you got Halle Berry in another hood film, Monsters Ball. Yep. Where, yeah. Where where P Diddy is a convict, and the one who has the best action at the mama is Billy Bob Thornton, Sling Blade. Yep. <laughs> right, you feel good, right. you know. So she want to be made to feel good, and she got an award for that. Throw in uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Not as Trey in Boys in the Hood, but as uh, the football player, Radio Jerry Maguire. Oh, Jay. <laughs> Not, not snow dogs. Not snow dogs. You know we love us some Cuba Gooding Jr. over here with the Rock, right? We love us some Cuba Good. We love you, brother. Cuba Jr. We're going to get him on the show. Uh, but we talking about uh, Jerry Maguire. Show hey. me the money. Right. Show me the money. Right. right. So when it comes to hood films, there's oh, no group shit. of people that loves hood films more. <laughs> than the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences that loves to solidify that and, black black. And and you know what? You, you By you saying that, you bring up the other point about it's the same with slavery films. So Absolutely. it right seems there. like there, there, there is some type of attraction to the spare of black folks and the mm -hmm. stories that is told. It almost seems like a conspiracy, don't it? Ah, man, I don't know. The help. The that hell. help? Oh hell yeah! Gone with the wind, kicked it off. Mm hmm. So there, there's. What else we got? Roots. Most certainly roots. Yeah. But love, it. Can we keep going? Wait, somebody stop me! Come on! Ah keep man! Stop me, man! You know there's more out there, man. Oh, Har Harriet's gonna get something. Twelve years a slave. Oh, Lupita Leongo, twelve years a slave. I'm telling you, man. She would tell a widget for us. So what, is, so what is it about our despair, man, that's so attracting? Well, it's, 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 it's two things, you know, I think. One, it may keep us from seeking a happy, happy like, you know, when I said, oh, man, you know, some of us is living a good life. One was like, we all are, you know what I mean? And <laughs> I think we get addicted to despair, you know what I mean? Easy, you know, easy. <laughs> we, we, get, we get addicted to despair, man. You know what I mean? Man. We we get addicted and to a spare to despair. I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think you know, you know, you know, motherfucker. You know, why aren't you getting a job? Oh, you know the man out here keep me that like nigga. Get your, you know, you can you can put out an application. You know, right, right, and so. We get into a point of our own despair um, and become addicted to those movies. Um, and, does, and it, I does think, it keep? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm saying, does it keep our creativity in the peephole? Hell so yeah. We don't, we don't fully expand to the left and right, as you were saying. It, it keeps our creativity. Well, in order for us to be recognized, we have to create. Uh, you know what? I'm, I, I want an Oscar. So I'm gonna have to create me a hood slavery film. If I can do a, a slavery in the hood type film. Slavery that would double my that would double my chances. Oh hell yeah. Slavery. Slavery in the hood. Yeah. Some hood nigga done got you know what? There is there's almost something very similar to that called Brother Future. Now some of y'all cats may have seen this in school and just don't remember it, but it started off as a cat that was in the hood. And he were running. He, I think him and his friends stole something. And they were running away. And a cop hit them with the car. Now, I think the cop, it was by mistake. But let's just say, for all intents and purposes, the cop did this on purpose. Right. When he got knocked out, he got knocked back to slavery. But he, <laughs> but he still had on. Yeah, yeah. He got knocked back to slavery. But he still had on his clothes. You know, the 90s gear. The shorts, cross color. <laughs> His hat and anything, and he was a rapper, man. Holy shit. Yeah, he was a rapper. He was a rapper. Oh, no, yeah. No, no, no. And so he was, was not a rapper during that. slavery time, brother. No. Please don't say. That. Uh, he, he he taught he taught he taught some slave kids to running, man. Y'all think I'm bullshitting? This is a brother brother future, man. This this is a for real 
movie, man. It was made like in ninety like ninety one. I don't believe this building destroyed. I'm telling you, man. See that? <laughs> see, <laughs> you can't, you can't y'all, y'all cats don't be <laughs> looking at all the videos I put on there, man. I have put this <laughs> on <laughs> here. There's some people that have <laughs> seen <laughs> clips, for, <laughs> brother Future, man. <laughs> That atmospheric science done got to your <laughs> softened your brain, nigga. That ain't no real movie. It sure did, because if that was the case, it would have it swept the Oscars, man, in 1991. <laughs> see, that shit would have swept the Oscars, man. It, it, ain't, it ain't in my mental Rolodex, so it don't exist. That shit did sound like the greatest motherfucking movie in, in, of all time. The greatest movie the movie ever made. made. The cop ran the nigga over. And then by the time he came to, he was oh, in the 1400s. I'm telling you, man, that's a exactly. He was teaching motherfuckers how to run. Dude, man. listen. I told slaves how to do the running, man, between cotton and Listen, pickle. man. Bro. Moses Gunn was in the film. <laughs> Vanetta McGee was in the film, dude. No, no, don't be trying to, uh-uh. Don't be trying to throw their names into the shit. <laughs> you trying to enhance this joke, man. Don't try to throw them in there. Don't do that. That's not a real situation. You bullshit. Oh, shit. I, I, this ain't even going on. Right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gonna cut this whole shit out. Cause you, hey, you wasted time. Oh, shit. Ain't no brother future. That motherfucker <laughs> told him to, to taught him the running man queen picking cotton and shit and, 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 and shit like that, man. I'm telling oh, you, man, shit. that cat's teaching some slave kids some a running man, man, yo. Oh man. Oh uh, man. And the motherfucker. How you gonna have energy to learn the running man after you and pick cotton man, all day? That's what listen, I want. Yo, for the for the ones, look for the people that wants to know the truth. You, brother, future, nineteen ninety one. Okay, and so it start what started off as a joke to these dudes turned out to be a real thing. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on, now, Joe Morton, Joe Morton. Brother from another planet? Yes. Oh, shit. Brother Future? <laughs> Hell no. That oh, shit don't shit. exist. Nigga, nigga, nigga told him to run a man and not run for your freedom? That's what that is? <laughs> Twelve years of running man. Uh, Twelve, Twelve years of running. <laughs> Ain't no way. All right, so I don't even know if we're going to continue this shit. It's episode over. <laughs> Oh, well, he is a running man. That's the funniest <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Directed by Steve McQueen. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, man. I'm, I'm back. So, I'm sorry, I'm man. so happy. I'm so happy I brought that one up, man. This that this Yo. film actually has a fairly decent cast, man. Hey, y'all are here oh, talking about this joke ain't real. That joke is real as hell, man. Oh, that nigga said twelve years of running, man. Oh <laughs> shit. If the, Academy, if the Academy don't recognize it, it ain't a real I'm uh, fucked up, man. Uh snap, man. But yeah, the slave films and hood films, man. Uh, two things that the Academy gives a lot of fucks about. And, you know, most of us nowadays are, you know, even say that we're, we're tired of slave films. Um, some A lot of people say that we're tired of these slave films. Um, and they're, honestly, I think in the last couple of years, it's been, what, Harriet and Annabella. Um, but, you know, before then, they were produced at a higher rate, you know, um, Right. In the 70s, you know, we had Mandingo and Drum, uh, you know, really coming out, showing us uh, some of the horrific natures of slavery, man, that films like Gone with the Wind had watered down uh, quite a bit. Um, and so, I don't know, something that, you know, the stories that we tell as uh, writers, directors, you know, whether it be in literature or film, you can't tell a lot of these black stories without some type of despair and even oppression behind it, you know, right. because that is the story of an, opp- of, of an oppressed group. You know, we can't make films like, you know, Lord of the Rings or, you know, the never ending story because we can't we can't we can't think outside of that. You know, we don't see life in this fantasy world that the way that. 
you know, that the oppressors have done over the years. I don't know why when you guys talk certain images going through my head, man, but when I thought of all black people and playing in The Hobbit and shit, man, that, <laughs> made, that just made me smile. <laughs> made me smile on the inside man uh, but you know you know one of my favorites is even though it talked about oppression was i i love um the wiz i love the wiz man I, oh my god if that felt like a fantasy sort of a even though it's a remake of right of, of, of some I love the right wiz. Oh and so god, I when it. we do enter in certain fantasy films man we put our spin on it but there you know some of the ideas doesn't come you know from our thinking you know there was so much other things that we had to overcome hell to to fantasize about certain things a certain way you got to be able to write this down sometimes i think generations before us are trying to protect us i remember reading in um uh, uh richard wright's story um he was talking about he got into a rock fight with with uh white kids and they started it first and when he came back and told his mother uh, because one of them threw it was a dirt bomb, but a dirt bomb had a rock in it and hit him, Richard Wright. And he came back and told his mother, and his mother beat him, saying that, you know, they had started it, but, you know, she was trying to get him in the mindset of during that time period, I guess the 40s, what have you, 30s and 40s, you can't, you can't do this. This will get you killed. Um, and just think about all the practical information we give to black folk. Oh, you get, my mom was like, yo, you get a job. My mom was like, yo, you get a job. And. You'll be a good black man, and one day you're going to run this household and all that type of shit, man. And then, so I had dreams of being, you know, fairly just artistic, just living off that, man. But it became a scary notion, you know, because, <clears throat> you, know, you know, at that time, you know, if somebody said as a white kid, oh, I want to travel, I want to do this, I want to live my life before I get into college, not saying that their family wouldn't um, be upset, but, you know, it didn't sound crazy to us for you know white kids to have that experience but black kid you tell a black kid who has an opportunity to go to college oh, i just want to find myself you better find yourself in freshman class <laughs> you better find yourself in orientation and figure it out while you're there you know it just get this degree you know get, get you a nice woman and have you some kids and get you a house and, you know that shit, man and then we we get scared, I, I, I think. So the despair piece um, and not thinking outside of that box, as you pointed out, I think many times, you know, writers and actors and directors are scared to go outside of what is supposed to be black stories. And that's true. And I also, because, you know, we do represent uh, individuals that are righteous those stories are out there and they're not being put um, to use too, you know, cause Hollywood maybe not even want to put the, that type of attachment to some of the, you know, ideas that black writers may have. And so they rather keep us in a box because there's still a big working machine behind us, you know, especially when it gets right. the stuff that it is released in the theaters or to a broader audience, you know, Warner brothers is going to have a final say so. You know, MGM, Universal, um, all that. They're going to have a final say-so on what gets put out there. You know, there is the independent level, but your platform doesn't ring the same way as HBO Max does. You know, you get your movie put on HBO Max. And, you know, you're talking much differently when it comes to, district, you know, how your stuff is distributed. Right. I, I, ironically, man, I just watched a movie um, called Fast Colors. And I, I don't know the... The director but her name is julia hart and and it was and it was about you know it was sci-fi you know and and the people who didn't like it felt like it was racist and sexist because the main characters were black and and women it fucked me up like <laughs> it's like this is like oh you know all 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 white men are bad, and the, and one of the main characters was um, was her father. She was biracial, like the main character was biracial. All oh, like you know, and I was sitting there like, wow, how narrow a focus was on this film for those people who didn't like it. 
and you know just mad because it was black and it was and you know or or, or, or um, biracial and and women as the main characters man it was you know it was wild the only thing that they could see was that white white men were portrayed <clears throat> as evil but they were also it was also the top people in this area so Man, if we had more diversity at the top, man, when we have conspiracy movies, we could put more black and Hispanic people in it. Damn <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all on the top. <clears throat> right. And, you know, it's just aspects that, you know, we're still trying to overcome, uh, um, you know, as we try, as, as things change and we get, uh, you know, bigger platforms to do this stuff in. Um, so... With uh, with that being said, um, there are definitely other topics that I would like to uh, for us to hit on, and you know we definitely talked about um, the hood films. We spent a great uh, deal talking about that, and then we kind of got into the slave films where y'all uh, thought that a flick where a cat from the hood got knocked back into slavery don't exist. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We ain't gonna do that again. So. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. The hold, movie, hold on. the movie of the day, and for everybody viewing, has officially became Brother Future. JD, Brother Future. yes, Doctor, yes, Doctor, yes. I can't believe that this is a real movie. I just Roy Campanella the second. Roy Campanella. Yeah. This is a real. Movie, yeah, man. Doctor Tafari, build and destroy. I stand corrected. I, I thought you was bullshitting, <laughs> man. <laughs> a street kid from Detroit, Michigan, is hit by a car. When he awakes, he <laughs> finds himself a slave in South Carolina <laughs> in 1822. That's the shit, man. And and had the audacity to teach these motherfuckers <laughs> to run. <laughs> That, that fucked me 12 up. Twelve years of running back. That motherfucker was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching Kid and Play before I got knocked out. So. I'm telling like, you, man, that part had me. Hola, hola, eh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That that became the spiritual of the time. Oh my <laughs> gosh, yo, it was out of control, yeah. man. But you know, it, it has kicking, kicking feet together and shit. <laughs> Feet don't fail me now. No, no. See, the subject matter here was about them feet. We started off talking about Sweetback and his feet. Sweetback. Now we talk about the motherfucker that's twelve years of running man. Right. Yeah, oh man, yeah. look, look at that! Thank you for bringing that cipher, closing the cipher on that, because the beginning Absolutely. certainly was about feet running us to to freedom, and then we end up with a nigga come back to fucking slavery and teach <laughs> niggas fucking the running man. Right. So I, I'm working on, I'm going to tell y'all brothers, I'm working on the treatment of a movie called Help in the Hood. And it's about, uh, uh, oh, mm. it's about a, a maid that gets an opportunity in, uh, on, uh, in Lamarck Park. <laughs> and since right, Lamarck right. Park has been gentrified, she gets a job. No, she gets whitewashed. What, what's it called? Black ball? She gets white balled. I'm trying to figure out a way to enhance to double or triple my chances to get a nomination. <laughs> so what's called Help in the Hood? It's a combination of the movie that was a book and then Boys in the Hood. It's a, it's hey. a, it's a high help in the hood. Hey, make the, ma make the main character be a man in a dress. Oh, man, shit. That'd be oh. the main. I knew there was something that missing, and that's it. <laughs> Brother, I know I'm going to quadruple my chances now. Yeah. This is it. Oh, man. Damn, that's perfect. Oh, that's Brother. perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Not a not a transgender individual. No, no. A man uh, who's playing a woman. Like motherfucking Tootsie. <laughs> like, like, like Tootsie. <laughs> that's it. So Tootsie, Mrs. Doubtfire in the hood. In the hood. Helping the hood. Helping the hood. Oh, this is gonna be holy good. shit. <laughs> Right, we don't play it ourselves because now everybody's hearing it. So motherfuckers oh, gonna start to write the treatments. Everybody all yeah. over the world, they got a head start on us because they got their pen wet that, right now. Right, you're talking you about be, yeah. I think we can really make this happen though. M Mrs. Doubtfire, Tootsie, in the hood. Oh, 
help in the hood. She got to have colloquials ah, from her from her grandfather and mother. That you makes definitely everything know go right. that her last name has to be Mrs. Jefferson. Some shit like that, Ooh. Mrs. Washington. <laughs> Mrs. Washington. <laughs> Mrs. Washington. Ho- Mrs. Hoover. <laughs> Mrs. Warren. Yeah, Mrs. Harding. Warren G. <laughs> oh, snap, oh, yeah. man. That is out of control. So, yeah, that is the movie that I recommend. Um, not saying that every podcast is going to have a recommendation, but clearly, Brother Future is too believable to be true unbelievable to be true oh shit. so yeah i i think uh you know there's some messages out of it crazy enough as it is it does have a moral i forgot it was that company uh what's it called wonder works wonder works mm. uh family movies so those were highly popular in the uh the late 80s and uh 90s uh amongst uh uh, schools. Do a Google. Do a Google search on that. See if we got a, a, a Emmy nomination. Because <laughs> for them to not recognize this shit, I mean, this is everything they love. Brother Future. Brother. Oh, man, I like how one of our cl- got, yeah. one of our clips come up in the search results. Uh, it has two, one win and one nomination. It has a daytime Emmy for outstanding direction and composition. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this is, hey man, I told you. You are you bad, boy. You are a bad man. Oh, oh snap. Hey, what I tell you. And it has a DGA you award. Bad, bad man. Oh. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. You didn't tell me that it had a Directors Guild of America, Build and Destroy. It has oh, a DGA, got a DGA for Outstanding Directorial Achievement in Dramatic Shows. Now, you know, ah. that's, that's Roy Campanella. That's dramatic? Yeah. Yeah. RC2, right there. He directed it. Oh, it was a Directors Guild of America Outstanding Direction. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, man. you know, dude, oh. this got to take some. You got that's a, that's a got lot it. of balls right there, man. The, to take a hood dude into slavery and teach and, and where he has a scene where he's teaching slave kids running man. Uh, shit, man now, I, I dare I dare to I, believe it when you first told me this shit. But after now <laughs> looking at IMDB and seeing oh, the synopsis, shit. now I also believe that he really did teach them the running man <laughs> in the slavery era. Yo, man. The level of fuckery that that's on. <laughs> oh. It's man, unforgivable. Of- it's unforgivable. I, I hope everybody who watches or listens or whatever they're doing, please devote your time to at least study the synopsis <laughs> of Brother Future. Right. Don't buy that, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, don't, no, don't, don't do that. Don't be like the doctor over here and buy it. Because, you know, I buy, I buy an archive just so I can bring it up to people and they can be like, what the fuck is this shit? And not only that, Son, you, that would call me, you would call me at 2.30 in the morning and say, hey, man, guess what I got? I, say, I have no clue what you got. <laughs> what you got? I got the Blu-ray reissue of Brother Reissue? Future. <laughs> of, of Brother, Brother Future. <laughs> Love it. I'm sitting here because I know you gave me a whole archive. I got to see if this is in. This it's not. It's not because I recent. Oh, because I recent. I discovered it after I had uh, gave you the uh, collection, and so, um, and plus I had bought the DVD and found out the DVD was about forty five minutes short. So I was like, "Oh, there's forty five more minutes of this fuckery," and so I went and bought the VHS uh, tape and. Uh, my wife uh, went and got me a VHS player, so you can thank her for even making this a possibility, for giving you forty, <laughs> for giving y'all forty-five more minutes of this. <laughs> oh man, unbelievable! It was an additional forty, and that forty-five minutes, that additional forty-five, that's what got them the, the Emmy and the Directors Guild for outstanding direction. And there's something up in there that they didn't want the rest of us to see that the DGA saw. And the Emmy board saw, and they said this shit is classic. Ah, we got to, did, did, we got to freeze did he this. Talk about history. Freedom? Ah man, I don't even know yeah. how you even like whose idea. Was, like, come on, man, 
You know, this came out in 91, man. Certain. Like, every now and then, you like to be in on certain meetings. Like, I love to see the group of writers who are just like, okay, we take a boy from Detroit. And he gets hit by a car. He goes back to sleep. A police car. A police car. A a police car. Everybody's like, "Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's going to go back to slavery, and he's going to teach him what dance is out now. The Cabbage Patch is a running man. No, the Cabbage Patch would be too hard to try to mimic. We're going to just do the running man. That's going to symbolize freedom. What the fuck are y'all talking about? What are you talking about? I wish I was in the mo- in, in the in the group and like, what are you talking about, man? Are you serious? Like, I've, I've been fired that day. Like, you serious right now? This is your real pitch? Mm. My ass would have been fired and I would have gone on to win an Emmy and shit. I'd have been mad like shit if oh, I was in there. Man, that's <laughs> too good, man. Like ninety one, I think Boys in the Hood came out in ninety one, man. Like, you know how much that that is oh, wild. Shit. That is wild, dude. I didn't know it got a I didn't know it got a daytime Emmy. So yeah. yeah man. But I did yeah, I did post it on the Facebook page, man, and it got quite a bit of uh responses man you know some people even remember seeing it in school so i thought in school oh yeah you know this type of stuff was shown in school what neighborhood you live in where a motherfucking teacher said let me show this motherfucker i i got you i'm so glad i was out of school by then because if my teacher I can't even imagine. Don't I, let me not say that because I can't even imagine being in the headspace as a young person to be sitting there looking at that. I mm. can't imagine it. Mm. Heck yeah! Well, shoot. I can't imagine it. Well, that's what's up, fellas. I think uh, we're gonna wrap it up on this note, man. Oh fuck! Yeah, me. we uh, <clears throat> had a pretty good, pretty good uh, show today. Went over. Quite a bit of stuff, man. Talk good about hood films and uh, some of the psychology behind it and uh, whatnot. We'll definitely read out some more comments on our next podcast from our audience uh, when we pose more questions uh, for y'all uh, to answer. And soon enough, we'll be on. We'll be live on camera and uh, discuss some of the films that we uh, haven't talked about. I know. Dr. T want to really talk about the Wiz, so we're going to make sure that that happened um, at some point. Man. Might have a good segment for that one, right, fellas? Hey, hey, wow. hey! Talking about connected to despair, you can't win. <laughs> that's why I'm using the mic. And that's why you can't win. There we go. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> drink yourself some drink and some smoke yourself. <laughs> oh man, that, yeah. You know I'm gonna go crazy on that one. The crows kept that motherfucker up on the <laughs> anyway. I don't... That's next episode because I'm I'm about to go in on black crows holding us down. That shit is wild. Absolutely, they could dance though. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Well, until then, see y'all next episode. Well, well, well uh, oh. I'm working on uh, getting Ann Eskridge as the guest next week. Okay. You know who that is? You need to let me know. I'm going to let you know. <laughs> Dr. Kafari. I'm going to read, I'm gonna read the biography of, of uh, the sister, Miss okay. Eskridge. Anne E. Eskridge, who's University of Detroit Mercy, adjunct English professor. Mm. She's been involved with media for more than 30 years. I think she's a great guest. Starting as a news reporter in Oklahoma, Buffalo, and Detroit. She's a freelance mm-hmm. writer, video, video and film producer, published author, and a script writer. Right? She wrote a movie called Brother Future, which aired on PBS nationally in 1994, and it won numerous awards. Y'all heard of Brother Future? <laughs> she had a children's book <laughs> called The Sanct- Sanctuary, published by Cobble Hill. I think we need to have her come on, and then we can ask her... What inspired her to uh, to do that? No doubt. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. No so we're gonna work no on doubt. getting Miss Eskridge next week because no doubt I couldn't believe what Spinks brought to us, man. No doubt, oh, no man. doubt. I'm rather, uh, yeah, you know, I, that would be cool to actually have her on here and be like, why? 
or how? Why? Or how? It's late. <laughs> right, right. Or running. <laughs> Why or how or when? You know, but <laughs> Miss Eskridge, can we get this? Can we understand? Because it was a formula that had to be followed. And I just want to see. That's incredible. That's science fiction. Mm hmm. Yo, B. Yeah. Science and it has a message at the end of it, man. Because it's not like. What's because he can't. Because I don't want to spoil the ending, man, but he eventually don't went. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Okay. You got to spoil yeah, it for me, man. I, I, don't don't spoil. Spoil. I, need, to, I need to know. So you need to ask yourself <laughs> did, he, did he return to the hood or not? Did, did he return to the hood? Okay. Or stay in sleep? <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell me this. Did this motherfucker have a choice? Like, <laughs> did he have a choice? Like, you know, is it a choice? Was he was he wearing ruby slippers and shit? Like, you could have you could have left slavery at any time you wanted to, Tyrone. Oh my! <laughs> we ain't got nothing else after this, man. This is like, this is the end of the show, man. There ain't no way we can close this out. This is gonna have to be. A we gonna get y'all next week. <laughs> That's it, man. Uh, Ain't nothing else after this. Yo, that was almost as good as uh, 12 12 years of running, man. That shit has me smiling now. Okay. All right.